Today, we're going to see how we can get started tracking our expenses with Excel, specifically Money in Excel, an awesome add-in that integrates into all of your financial accounts and tells you how you're doing every single month. So tune in. Everyone, I'm James Montemagno, and I'm doing something a little bit different this episode. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is actually walking through how I personally have started to manage my expenses. Uh, that's right. I mean, like every time I swipe my credit card or swipe my Apple Pay, what am I spending on? You know, I've recently been tracking in the last few years my income and sort of my Robinhood accounts and my investments and my 401ks and retirement accounts. And that really only tells me how much money I have. It doesn't necessarily tell me how much money I'm spending. And when I start to think about early retirement or normal retirement in the next 5, 10, 20, 40 years, I have to think, what are my expenses at the end of each month? How much do I actually have to have saved that I can start to withdraw that specific amount? Now, a lot goes into that, whether that's the coffee that I buy on occasion, the coffee beans that I buy nearly every other week, or the food or the utilities or anything like that, rent. Uh, I need to know and manage that out. So I asked all of you what I should be using. And actually, it was quite interesting. I asked everyone, what are you using for budgeting over here? And I got a lot of responses. Um, actually, Stephen over here said old school Microsoft money. Um, I love Alex's tweet here, just use Excel. And then I said I was looking at money in Excel, and a bunch of people responded to that. A bunch of people also responded with other cool tools, such as You Need a Budget. Um, people were using Mint, a lot of You Need a Budget, um, Quick uh, QuickBooks. Uh, someone said to develop my own application, whole bunch of good things. And Jerry down here agreed to check out this Money in Excel. So if you've never heard of Money in Excel, it's actually just a template for Excel, um, hence Money in Excel. Um, this is actually really, really neat. Uh, I think it's one of the coolest sort of templates I've ever seen inside of Excel. And what it does is it helps you manage all of your accounts, cash, credit, and investments, and loans as well. You can connect all of them up. You can stay on top of your finances, customize your workbooks, and there's you know also achieving your financial goals. Super easy to get started. Uh, you can just say file new, um, money in Excel, create. You can also use the web browser uh, if you want to, or you can use the desktop applications up to you. So right here it says whether you're on Windows, Mac, or Excel on the web. Now note though that you will need a Microsoft 365 family or personal subscriber account, and it only works in the US. And I believe that's because they are using Plaid. Um, Plaid is this in-between way of connecting financial accounts to applications. If you're using anything such as Betterment or Acorns or Venmo, these are things that you're probably used to signing in with Plaid. This is nice because they sit in between the application developers and your app, so you don't have to worry about the application developer handling those transactions that goes through Plaid. Um, so it's really, really neat. So let's get started here. I'm going to open up Excel and right here, money in Excel. Now, I actually didn't know that there's a bunch of other things like nutrition tracker, periodic table, college decision helper, relocation helper, all sorts of cool templates. You should probably check them out. Let's open up money in Excel and hit create. So this is going to download a template. Now, if it's your very first time running it, you may see a little pop-up that says, please allow the add-in to be trusted. You're going to need to do that. And once you do that, you'll see this money in Excel button here. I've already done that here because I ran through this once or twice before. And um, you will then, um, once you hit the add-in accepted, you can click on this money in Excel, which will open up this pane on the right-hand side. So what's nice is you have a few workbooks down on the bottom left. Welcome, instructions, snapshot, transactions, and categories. I'll walk through some of them. And there's a bunch more too. This shows you exactly how to get started. Um, you come over here, add your accounts, you can customize your categories, and then you get insights into your planning and a bunch of good stuff. You can even say, I have goals and I want this stuff, or how many coffees am I buying every single month? On the instructions, again, it's relatively simple because it's pretty much what I told you earlier. You're going to go in. Make sure you have money in Excel over here open, trust the add-in, sign in, connect your accounts, and start going for it. 
So let's check it out, um, which is kind of nice. Now you can save this anywhere. Uh, I put mine, I use the desktop application because I put mine in my personal vault inside of OneDrive, but totally up to you. You're gonna sign in with your Microsoft account. Now I have a test account that I'm gonna sign in with, um, and this is sort of you know just my test account that I use. So I'm gonna go over here and just log in over here. All right. So the first thing that you may see is that there's an update available for this workbook. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit update over here. This may pop up at some point, but it should hopefully pop up and show you that it just updated some algorithms and done some stuff there. Now I've already logged in once before on this account. So um, it may come over here and ask you to do a getting started guide of walking through adding your first account. If not, you'll see that you'll be right on this homepage where it says cash accounts, credit accounts, loans, and investments. The first thing that I do want to point out though, is that you can actually come in and manually add things here. You can also come into categories and you can add custom categories and you can get a snapshot. I'm going to make these a little bit bigger so we can see them here. Um, and we'll see that there's actually a bunch more too, which is kind of cool. So here you're successfully connected an account. I actually haven't yet. So surprise, surprise, let's go ahead and add one. Here, see, I can connect account, manually add an account, or manually add a transaction. So you can, let's say you had a uh, you had a, a house loan, and for some reason it didn't connect to your account vendor or whatever, you could just add that account and update it every month manually yourself. So totally up to you. Also, if you want to, you can just manually add every single transaction all you want. But I'm gonna go ahead and connect an account because this is what I think is pretty real life. And this is going to use plaid. So I'm going to hit continue here. Now I want you to, sh to show you here. There's all sorts of accounts that plaid supports. And I got to say that plaid just supports just about everything, including PayPal, ally bank, Vanguard. Uh, I'm going to use my chase account here for my credit card. Uh, it also does stuff like if you're using, uh, let's say Wealthfront. Uh, wealth, if I can spell Wealthfront correct, Wealthfront. You got a Wealthfront account there, or if you're using uh, Betterment, there it is, or even Robinhood right there too. So just about every account that you can think of is probably gonna be supported with Plaid. And if not, you can always add yours manually, or of course you can wait until Plaid supports it. Uh, if you are interested in a Wealthfront, Betterment, or Robinhood account, I'll put affiliate links below. I use both Wealthfront and Betterment to manage sort of ongoing growth. And of course, Robinhood to buy all my Dogecoin. Now I'm going to hit chase here. Now I'm going to go ahead and blur out this screen as I enter my credentials and uh, we're going to connect a real account. This credit card is actually something I don't use very often. So there's very minimal expenses and transactions here. So I'm going to hit submit and we will note that I have a two factor authentication set up on this account like everybody should. So I'm going to go ahead and send myself an auth token and then go ahead and sign in. Now this will take a second or two here as I get my account. Here we go. And I'm just gonna enter it. There we go. And this will work the same if you have two-factor authentication in an app or by text or anything like that. Now here on my Chase account, I only have a credit card, okay? Um, on other accounts, let's say if you have a, you're using Chase as a bank as well, it may show your checking account, your savings account, and your credit cards. So here, it's only going to show me my expenses. It's not going to show me anything from uh, my savings or checkings, which would be maybe perhaps um, my pay paycheck at the end of the day. So it's going to go ahead and add, and it's going to connect my account, and it will go ahead and start to input stuff here. Now, the first thing we're going to see is that my Chase credit card is here and I owe $123. It's actually really nice just to come in and have, see all my credit cards listed in one place so I can see everything that's going on. I can hide the account, add a nickname. I can edit the account. I can always go to settings. I can connect more accounts. I can manage the account here. Um, you can turn on and off communications, all sorts of good stuff there too. So uh, at any time you can hit this update button here and that'll go ahead and ask Plaid for your most recent transactions. Now let's see what we have. Oh, all sorts of transactions. Okay, so let's go ahead and bump this up a little bit here. And what you're gonna see is that pretty much I have a YouTube premium account. I have a payment here. I have a Netflix account. I have an annual payment uh, membership fee. 
of a transfer, I have YouTube premium. Let's just say I have a lot of YouTube premium and also apparently a Google Cloud subscription here. Now, oh, and Yes Please Coffee, which also if you're looking for a coffee subscription, you can go ahead and do that there. Oh, and Hulu, look at that. Now, here's what I wanna show you, which is kind of nice about this, is that you can come in, and if I pump this up even more, you can add custom categories or you can modify the categories that are here. So for example, this might be uh, bills, utilities, or maybe this is entertainment. Um, you can come in and you can actually come in and filter just like you would in Excel and say YouTube premium, and then say, you know what? All of those are entertainment. And then what you can do is, let's say you had a subcategory. You could maybe say subscription, for example. So maybe I wanna add that. So I'm gonna go to category, or, you know, and I could do that here. I could say category name. Let's pump this up a little bit too. I could say category name for entertainment. I could say subscription here. Come back to my transactions. Then I could say subscription. I could say, you know what? All those were entertainment subscriptions. So I could start to really flesh out specifically what I'm spending. Uh, if I want to, I could also add a custom category down here too. So for example, I could say um, that uh, maybe this will be like taxes or for, you know, for some reason. And this would be an expense. You have expenses and transfers and income that you have here. So that's something that you wanna kind of be aware of. And then once you have that category, it will also show up inside of your category um, list there. So there's taxes, for example. Let's go back to my transactions and let's go ahead and remove those filters. And you can see here that, you know, I have automatic payment, transfers, these are fee and charges. And you can start to see that I have a bunch of things in here. Same thing, I might say that all Hulu. Let's go into here, Hulu um, and Netflix. And yeah, that looks good. Okay, this is all good. We're gonna say that is gonna be a entertainment. Copy that down over here. Again, that's a subscription. Copy that down. Perfect. Then again, if I want to maybe clean up my yes, please coffee here, it's not entertainment. It made a good guess, but that's actually going to be uh, restaurants and dining. Maybe that one's a little bit hard. I like restaurants and dining. And then my favorite thing to do is create a special category for restaurants and dining. That's just called coffee. There we go. And then if I go back to subscription, now it only shows me that subcategory there. Perfect. Now, as I start to go through and I start to clean up some of these, you can see most of them are pretty good. Some of them, you know, aren't too bad. This is a transfer. Maybe I really want that to be, yeah, it's a transfer, I guess. Oh, payment. There's a payment in general. You can see you just add that there. I went through um, and added all my different accounts and actually did all of this and cleaned it up in a matter of, I don't know, I want to say 20, 30, 40 minutes. You know, it depends on your accounts and how many are coming in there. Google, that's probably is shopping. Uh, hard to say exactly what it is. I could look that up. And I'm looking at this is pretty good. Now what's nice here is that I can actually get a snapshot in time um, right here. So let's go ahead and bump this up a little bit more. And we can see that in January, I spent the most money in entertainment. If I actually come up to May, 2021, here we go. We have fees, entertainment, bills and utilities that are coming in. And we can start to see some trend lines, how much I'm spending this month versus my actual May spending or April spending, which was very low. Uh, again, this credit card is not used so much, but I can see over here, annual fees, Netflix, what are the requested merchants? Where's the money going inside of here? And you can come in and you can ta toggle between all of those. So you can see for a long time, it was actually lining up pretty well over here. And then every once in a while I have a big spike. So we can actually take a look at those snapshots. So at a baseline, that's what it gives you. It gives you the transactions that you can categorize, categories, including subcategories, which is quite nice, but there's more. In fact, over here under templates, you can add a few things such as budget, net worth, and recurring expenses. So I can just say add a notebook, this will enable me to check out all my subscriptions and memberships. I can set up that template. Here it's actually found a recurring expense, which is YouTube premium. So I'm gonna add that to my notebook. There it is. Go ahead and bump this up again. And what we can see is that now we have YouTube premium 
it shows me exactly how much I've spent on it year to date and the last time I paid. And that's how much it cost me, $13.22. So that's actually really, really nice. I can also add things like net worth over here. This is obviously useful if you have things such as um, your savings account or checking account in here. Right now, it's telling me my net worth is negative $123. Uh, and that's okay because I have one credit card and that's it. And of course, it shows me it's a liability. If I had other accounts in here, such as cash, loans, or investments, they'd also show up inside of this. Finally, there's a budget. This is, will actually help you track your expenses uh, over here. And budget's actually a really cool one where it'll show you, this might be my favorite one, it will show you your income versus spending that you have every single month and shows you spending over time. So I really love this. You can walk through and it'll show you why you're spending your money, where your money is going, et cetera, et cetera. And you can set up a budget and say, I only want to spend so much money this month. So here, for example, we can see my income's obviously $0, so that's not good, but we can see that, hey, May, there was a big spike. Is that what I want to have happen? Where is the money going? And it's going, obviously, between bills and those fees that popped up in my credit card. So all of the categories are here. It gives me that fine uh, budget. Additionally, it will pick out your favorite um, categories, or you can track your favorite categories, too. For example, if I wanted to put entertainment in here or I wanted to put restaurants and dining, we can see that uh, I can have a budget that I set for myself too on each of these different accounts. So right now I have these budgets and maybe I wanna say, you know what, for restaurant and dining, I wanna spend a budget of $25 every month. And then it will show me that I have $25 left. Same thing for budget of entertainment, let's do $25. Now will actually give me all of the things that I'm, um, I can track towards success and how I'm doing in these categories. So this is really, really nifty. Again, it does it all for you. You can connect all your different accounts up into it. I'm not going to show you my real accounts, obviously, besides this one checking account, because I wanted to show you what you get. And of course, when you start to link more accounts that have income and different items inside here, you'll get a lot more and hopefully more than negative $123, which is also a very funny number um, for this month's credit card bill. Well, there you have it. I hope that you found money in Excel, this full walkthrough for beginners, very insightful. Uh, it took me a little bit to figure out where to go, where to track things, how to sign in, and exactly how to get all my accounts set up. So I wanted to create this short little video. And for me, it's been really helpful so far. Like I said, understanding where my money is going. Uh, I don't actually track all of my financial accounts in here. I only do my main like checking and savings account and my credit cards. Because to me, I want to use this tool as an expense tracker. You, of course, do optionally have the ability to track all of your accounts, especially that's nice in your net worth. So you can see everything in one place. Uh, it does get a little bit tricky if you have a lot, a lot of accounts and all sorts of random institutions. But so far, everything that I've picked out mostly has just worked. Hope that you found this really insightful. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you like this video and you want to see more videos like this, let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions, let me know down there. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and ding, ding that notification bell so you get up to date when I put out any new episodes right here on my YouTube channel.